a big trade happen. It was a trade that Astros fans probably did not like back then, and they probably would not like it a little bit later when they traded a player they got, and that was the Glenn Davis trade. And that and they got uh, it was Kurt Schilling, Pete Harnish, and Steve Finley. And on this Locked On Astros podcast, we're going to go ahead and revisit that trade. How does that look 21 years later? And so, or actually 31 years later, I'm a math teacher. I should know that. And we'll discuss this and more on this Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, keep on, uh, make sure you subscribe to our, our uh, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to us and make sure you give us a like and on your way to work, on your way home to work, go ahead and keep on listening to us on Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure you listen to the Locked on Astros podcast. So I know uh, Brian James says that Trevor Story should go to the Astros. Yes, um, a lot of people say that should happen, but as we talked about yesterday on the podcast, I don't know if the Astros have the money to go ahead and do that, That, but that's a different story. Let's go ahead and go back in time. So on January 10th, 1991, the Astros acquired Kurt Schilling, along with Steve Finley and Pete Harnish for all-star Glenn Davis. This also didn't only just uh, get the Astros these three players, but this also opened the door for a certain Jeffrey Robert Bagwell. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about what happened to Kurt Schilling and who he was traded for. And we'll talk about what happened with Steve Finley and then Pete Harnish and then all this. There's so much for us to discuss on this podcast. And guys, do, do you all have any Glenn Davis moments? I mean, I didn't. Uh, if you all have any great Glenn Davis moments, go ahead and, and, and tell me this on, uh, on Twitter. If you want to go ahead and tweet at us at Eric Talks Droz at Locked On Astros, or if you want to uh, tweet at H-Town Wheelhouse, just go and tell us your favorite Glenn Davis moments. But um, in 1991, the starting rotation had, it was Jim Deshaies, Pete Harnish, Jimmy Jones, Daryl Kyle, and Mark, Mark P- Portugal. So the Astros basically, basically didn't need Kurt Schilling. So he was basically a setup guy. So uh, the Astros probably didn't know what they really had in that situation. Uh, but going looking at Kurt Schilling's stats, uh, that was his that was his fourth year. I guess he was he had three years. He made his debut in 1988. He had a 9.82 ERA that year. He was 0 and 3 that year. Granted, it was only 14.2 thirds innings. In 1989, he had a 6.23 ERA with the Baltimore Orioles in only eight and two thirds innings. And then 1990, he had a uh, a 2.54 ERA with 46 uh, innings. He had 32 strikeouts, and he mostly um, he didn't. He was basically a reliever, and he didn't really get a start to a chance to start until he was traded to the Phillies. We'll talk about that in a second. So uh, basically, a lot of people just saw him as basically a Will Harris, or maybe not even Will Harris. Maybe like just. Somebody had back into the bullpen. I don't want to use a Brooks Raley type reference, but just somebody like that. Somebody that just had nothing that basically was happened. So, um, so Jay Roberts says Mike Sims was going to be the new first baseman until um, that awesome spring training by Jeff Bagwell. Uh, so yeah, Mike Sims. I remember Mike Sims. Mike Sims was uh, supposed to be take over for Glenn Davis. I think that's why. They traded Glenn Davis. They're like, well, we have Mike Sims. And then uh, Jeff B- Bagwell came out and said, no, I'm pretty darn good. Uh, so give me a chance. And so uh, that was another uh, pretty good trade that the Astros made. So the Astros made some pretty good trades, but we'll talk about the really bad trade in another uh, segment inclu- in, involving um, uh, Kurt Schilling. 
So uh, they did have a loaded rotation. So they didn't really need Kurt Schilling in their opinion. And if you look at the stats, I mean, he wasn't overwhelming anybody. Yes, he had 71 strikeouts and 75 and two-thirds innings pitch. He did have a FIP of 287. He did have a 8.4 strikeout rate which uh, per nine inning, which was his highest of his career. So you saw him start to blossom a little bit with the Astros. His ERA plus was uh, 92, and you saw him kind of – develop a little bit more with the Astros, but the Astros, I guess they wanted a starting pitcher and they didn't really see Kurt Schilling as a starting pitcher. Lo and behold, he was going to become a starting pitcher uh, when he got traded. So Glenn Davis, let's go and talk a little bit about Glenn Davis. Um, this is what uh, sports writer uh, Paul Ladinsky had to say about uh, Glenn Davis. He said uh, Davis has averaged 26 home runs, a season despite playing his home games inside the Astrodome and despite having no protection to speak of in the lineup. One can only wonder what the Georgia native would have done if he had, he was sandwiched between Ron Gant and David justice in Atlanta. You stare at the same crack of wall every day. Uh, well, I don't know if that's, no, I don't think you're, that's something, but anyway, that just kind of shows how an outsider saw Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis was this power hitter, and let's go and look at Glenn Davis's stats. Um, where do I have it? I thought I had it up. Let me go and pull the stats up. But I know Glenn Davis was a powder hitter, power hitter that the Astros didn't have because they played in this cavernous uh, stadium. That um, it was not Min May Park, definitely. It was this big ballpark, um, the Astrodome. So uh, let's let me pull up the stats right here. Astro, oh, you have to type Astros because of, no, not trade there. Uh, so um, just looking up stats real quick and you do have the soccer player with the same last name. So you have to do this. So with the Astros, he hit uh, in 1985, he hit 20 home runs in 1986. He had 31 home runs in 1987. He had 27 home runs in 1988. He had 30 home runs in 1989. He had 34 home runs. And then 1990, he had 22 home runs. His career batting average with the Astros was 262. He had 166 career home runs with the Astros, 518 career RBIs. His OPS with the Astros was 819. So overall, you would say that he had a pretty good career with the Astros. His OPS plus was 129. So he was above average player with the Houston Astros. So uh, that was definitely something that a lot of player uh, fans were probably like, wait, he was an all-star in 1989. He finished seventh in MVP votes in 1989. He finished eighth in MVP votes in 1988. And he finished second in MVP votes in 1986. And you're going to trade him? You're going to trade him. What are you doing? I know Mike Sims, you, you're all excited about Mike Sims, but, and you got this Jeffrey Robert Bagwell, who's a third baseman, but we got Ken Caminiti over there. What are you going to do with this Bagwell guy? And then you have Mike Sims. So what are you going to do? So it just, it, they don't really know what's going on here. So the Astros had to make a decision. And unfortunately uh, they, uh, they went ahead and traded Glenn Davis, but it turned, it worked out a little bit. They did get some good players. Pete Harnish was a good player. They did, did get Steve Finley. I know he had the whole reputation of the uh, steroids and everything. And so, guys, uh, go ahead and give us your best Glenn Davis memories because I know there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast and you have memories of Glenn Davis. And so give us those. It's just like having your best built bar. And so it's the new year, and that means New Year's revolutions. And so it just just talk about your favorites. Um, built bar, like, uh, it's about getting fit or eating healthier or something like that. So just talk about what your favorite built bar is. And it's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar built bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good. You just want to eat it. Unlike any other protein bar, which makes it chalky or waxy or like a chemical spill when you want to eat healthy, just, um, but it just gets so boring. But by like week three, you might be thinking it's not just worth it. And you might just try to tra trade it away for a pitcher who's never going to pitch for you uh, like the Astros did with Kurt Schilling. 
But Belt Bars are covered in 100% rich uh, real chocolate. Most Belt Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has about 240 calories, 300 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. So even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way you can enjoy a delicious Bilt Bar and you can almost count it as a workout. Go to BiltBar.com and use the promo code and and the LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BiltBar.com. So let's go ahead and look at some of your uh, stats. So uh, uh, Gigi Garcia says you actually have a Astros um, Kurt Schilling card. Yes, um, I actually forgot that he pitched with the Astros for that one season. He actually pitched the, um, Jeff Bagwell's rookie season with the Astros, mostly out of bullpen. And then uh, Jay Roberts says that the Astros tried to l- use Kurt Schilling as a closer at one point. Uh, so apparently that didn't work. Uh, Jay Roberts also says that uh, his favorite Glenn Davis moment was the home run in game one of 1986 NLCS. That was his favorite moment. Um, So um, GG Garcia says, or G Garcia says when they traded Glenn Davis, I was sad. He was the first Astro I really liked as a kid. Um, We'll talk about Harnish. Um, Pete says that Glenn Davis two run homer off um, in on uh, June 8th 1989 he listened to it on the radio in Beaumont all the way from Baton Rouge congratulations so um also they had uh, Franklin Stubbs co- coming off a good season at first base too so it wasn't just Mike Sims it wasn't just uh, about Jeff Bagwell coming up and Jeff Bagwell from what I understand had a great season uh, spring training and he kind of opened some eyes and he kind of forced his way into the lineup and the rest is history of Jeff Bagwell. So just imagine if the Astros would have hung on to Glenn Davis, would Jeff Bagwell have had the career that he had, or maybe would he have been, I don't think he would have been traded because I think the Astros really traded for Jeff Bagwell for the purpose of keeping him around for a while, but it kind of makes you think if they didn't trade Glenn Davis, what would happen to Jeff Bagwell's career? Would he have started maybe in 1992 instead of 1991? How would that have affected his career? Um, and I guess the rest is um, history, speculative, all that type of stuff. So uh, looking at the rest of that, um, the rest of the stuff. So I have um, somewhere here I have where Glenn Davis talks about the big swap. Um, and he said that, uh, he said that, uh, oh, uh, that's Kurt Schilling, actually. And he was saying that uh, he remembers the day he was traded from the Orioles to the Astros. He said, I remember it clearly. I was sitting at home eating breakfast with my wife, my girlfriend then. And then Orioles general manager called and said, hey, kid, I want to let you know you got traded today. And he said, I thought it was pretty cool calling me like that. I just I thought that's just what they did. They called everybody on the team to, uh, when they make a deal. And he said, we just traded for Glenn Davis. I said, cool. Okay, I'll see you. And so the Orioles really, really, really thought they were getting a superstar. And they really, really thought that this was going to work out for them. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out for him. Like that, the he only played for three more seasons. And Glenn Davis just was not the same Glenn Davis he was with the Astros. In 1991, he had 10 home runs. He batted 227 with the Orioles with only 28 RBIs. In 1992, he hit 13 home runs. Then he uh, bat- batted 276. Then in 1993, he had battled a lot of injuries. Then he was eventually released. Um, and so I think he tried to make a comeback with the Royals as well. And but it's just it's sad to know that how good a hitter this guy was. But it just it just fell apart for him and. Um, I, I want you have to wonder if the Astros saw some type of decline in him because after the 1990 season, he de- was showing some signs of declining. I mean, the home runs went down, the the number of games played went down. So you have to wonder if the Astros saw something and they're like, "Hey, we got a chance to get two pitchers and this um, outfielder, Steve Finley. Let's go and get a shot." And so that's what the Astros did. And so. Uh, it's just pretty cool uh, 
looking at it back then, but um, overall, it just it just kind of weird to just look at this. But um, so I just it, you feel bad about Glenn Davis, but um, uh, Davis uh, he he did sign a he did sign the he did get the Orioles to sign a two year extension worth seven million dollars, but he never really got that. He he really didn't really do um, really good with them. And he said, I, I, I know the trade didn't work out for the, the uh, fans the way Baltimore wanted to. And, uh, and he said, it just, it didn't work out. And sometimes it just doesn't happen. So uh, we'll see. But uh, the Astros did get Steve Finley back in the trade. They did get Pete Harner. So let's go and take a look at their careers. So Steve Finley with the Astros, we all remember him um, in 1991. He had eight home runs in 1992. He had five home runs in 1993. He had eight home runs in 1994. He had 11 home runs, but Finley was not about the power. He was about the, the stolen bases. And uh, that's what he did in, uh, in 1991. He had 34 stolen bases and 44, 19, 13, his speed kind of declined a little bit, but we all know what happened in 1999 with the Diamondbacks where his power all suddenly uh, had a big uptick. Um, and that's where he kind of went up with the, um, the, the HGH or the um, steroids or whatever happened. I don't know. The, I don't remember the exact story with Steve Finley, but Steve Finley did play 19 years in professional baseball and, uh, you can say what you want about Steve Finley, but he, he did last a long time. He did try to hold on a little bit uh, too long, possibly at the age of 42. And he did try to play with the Rockies at the end. And, but at, uh, but when it comes to it, he just, I, I think he was done in 2006 with the giants and he batted 246 in uh, that season with six home runs and 40 RBIs. And then in 2007, at the age of 42, he batted 181 with the one home run and two RBIs. So I think he was more of a player's coach at that point, but Steve Finley with the Astros was a pretty good player. He did have a uh, lead, the lead, lead the league in triples in 1993 with 13. So he always had that power, that speed and his OPS was never really sexy because of, he didn't, he didn't have the raw power that you, you would expect, but uh, he did have that speed and he did have the ability to um, score. I mean, his highest with the Astros was 84. So now in, in terms of Kurt Schilling, like I already said, he uh, did have that one season with the Astros. He did get eight saves with the Astros, like Jay said. Um, so it just, it's, he did, they did, they try to make him be the closer and a setup guy for that season. And then, Pete Harnish, he's a guy that I remember being in the rotation, and uh, I thought I'd pull up his stats, but let me pull his stuff, stats up real quick. But he's a guy that was a, a pretty big um, cog in Astros. Both, I mean, rotation for a while there, but if you look at the stats, uh, he had one really great – or two, three great seasons with the Astros – one of those was an all-star season. Uh, that was the first season in 1991 where he went 12 and nine with the 2.70 ERA. He had 172 strikeouts in 216 innings. And then in, uh, two, in 1992, he had, he pitched 206 innings. 1993, he had 217 innings. So even if you lost Kurt Schilling for Glenn Davis, I believe they had one year of team control at the time. You got Pete Schilling, uh, I mean, uh, Pete Harnish, and he was a consist. I know that was a different era. Pitchers pitched more than they do now. You have starters go deeper into games, and but you had um, three seasons of 200 plus innings from uh, Pete Harnish, and he gave you 12, 9, 16 wins, and then eight wins in his final season with the Astros. So he gave you something. Uh, he, he gave you a lot of strikeouts. I mean, he wasn't Nolan Ryan or anything, but he gave you a decent amount of strikeouts. And so uh, you can't really complain about what you got in that trade. Kurt Schilling, if they would have given you, if you would have given him a little bit more time to develop, it, it kind of goes back to the whole J.D. Martinez. If you would give J.D. Martinez a little bit more time to uh, do that. So uh, 
G Garcia says Steve Finley hit those line drive home runs. Was that before the help or after the help? So um, then he also, Jay Roberts says that Harness, Portugal, Drabeck, Swindle could have been a great rotation. Yes, I agree. And uh, then, yeah, I, I agree with that. And then what if you had shilling to that, if you didn't trade away shilling? Just imagine how good that rotation would have been. And But the, at the same time, would shilling have developed into the same pitcher he was with the Phillies because he kind of learned how to be a starter uh, at that time. So I think the Astros benefited a lot more than the Orioles from that trade. So if you're going to go, I think uh, that's that trade was one of the honorable mentions as one of the worst trades and not just baseball history, but in sports histories, just because it was such a lopsided trade because the Orioles basically got nothing in return. Like Glenn Davis had like one maybe good season, if that, and then he kind of fell off the planet. And um, and it, it's a shame because he was a good player, and the Astros got so much out of that. And that's that's the bad thing about when you trade for a veteran slugger like that. You're going to have a situation like that, and that's why you can't always be, uh, bet on these players because sometimes – Father Time catches up to him a little bit earlier. And speaking of betting, Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports, the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and new updated desktop and more mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use their promo code locked on to get started today. From football, I know the regular season's over, but the the playoffs should be started soon. Basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, and baseball. Wait, never mind. They're locked out right now. But UFC and, and even your favorite Vegas, Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager in all your favorite sports. Bet online, it's where you the game starts. And thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Uh, whether it's on YouTube, keep on make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and make sure you give us a like after every podcast and make sure that you listen to us on your way to work, on your way home to work, on Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you listen to Locked On Astros podcast. So in honor of this um, this show, I went ahead and uh, wore my retro Bagwell jersey. And so um, I just think that uh, I, I just want to look back at how good that team could have been if Kurt Schilling could have developed into the pitcher he was with uh, the Phillies. So with the Phillies in uh, 1992, uh, I know in, in 1992 uh, he, he was four, 14 and 11 with a 2.35 ERA and, and he had 147 strikeouts in 226 innings. So he kind of, uh, he didn't really jump into the rotation right away. I believe if I remember correctly, he didn't, he didn't start going into the rotation until mid May. Um, so I, uh, yeah, he started 26 games that year, but he made, uh, he pitched in 42 games, but once he became a starter, he stuck in that rotation and he became a fixture in the Phillies rotation until 1999 or sorry, in, until uh, the year 2000. And then uh, I believe he was traded uh, to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And then uh, in 2001, you see him win a career high. No, actually in 2002 is when he won a career high 23 games. And then 2001, he won 22. And then with the Boston Red Sox in 2004, uh, he won 21 games. So you saw Kurt Schilling kind of develop a little bit later in his career. So the funny thing is the Astros had Kurt Schilling and the 1992 season was approaching. And the Astros were like, okay, well, we have um, enough relievers, but we need a starter. The Royals have this Jason Grimsley guy. I mean, sorry, the Phillies have this Jason Grimsley guy. Um, he could be a starter. Well, he had a bad season last year. Um, I don't know who the GM was at the time, but 
1991, uh, Jason Grimsley was one in seven with a 4.87 ERA. And uh, the Phillies want Kurt Schilling in return for Jason Grimsley. Well, he's just a reliever. I mean, that's a pretty good offer. We don't have to give up any of our prospects or anything like that. So why don't we just give, give up uh, Kurt Schilling? I mean, he's just a reliever, right? Well, how did that turn out for you? So Jason Grimsley uh, didn't pitch a single game for the Houston Astros. He didn't pitch a single game for the Houston Astros. He uh, pitched with the Toros uh, the entire 1992 season, and then he was later released. So can you imagine, can you imagine just trading away somebody who's 5% away from becoming a Hall of Famer for a pitcher who never pitched for you. I mean, I know we don't talk about that trade, uh, but that that's that's got to be one of the worst trades on the Astro side. Um, just for something you don't get. I, I would say that Mike Fires and um, Carlos Gomez is another one of those worst trades that you're like, wait, why do we do that? And it makes no sense because uh, wouldn't you love to have Josh Hader? I mean, his all his personal business aside, I mean, wouldn't you love to have Josh Hader in the back of the Astros bullpen right now? So, um, but um, not only was Jason Grimsley just not that great, uh, he did have a long career. He did pitch 15 years. He was also known for it when he pitched for the Indians. He did help um, Albert Bell apparently get a cork bat from um, on top of the roof or something. But also he was um, kind of, in part of the whole Balco um, st- um, HGH thing. So he was trying to get the extra edge or something. I'm not, I don't, I didn't really dig too deep into that. So the Astros had a future hall of fame pitcher and they traded him for Jason Grimsley. If that doesn't really make you sick to your stomach, that's crazy. So, um, so Jay Roberts says 1991 was a full rebuild build year because of that trade they went in 81 and 81 the next year i believe it was pretty amazing amazing yeah because when you add somebody like pete harnish and then you add a outfielder like uh, steve finley who can steal bases and back then in american league sorry in national league uh when you don't have the dh uh, speed does matter and so um I only retrospect at the time you said it made sense. Who know? Just like the Bo Sox didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Back then it's the same thing. Like the Astros didn't know. I mean, they didn't know about Jeff Bagwell. They were like, Oh, well we just got this skinny kid who can play third base. And um, we don't know. He doesn't, maybe not, doesn't have the arm to play third base and we don't, he's got this weird batting stance. So the Astros want to give us Larry Anderson. Larry Anderson's a good reliever. We need a good re- reliever. So, yeah, I mean, I know back then, you, I mean, we're talking about um, 30 something years later. It's hard to look back, but it just now, to, now knowing what we know, it's just like it was a terrible trade. So, nothing against uh, Jason Grimsley in 1993. He did have a 5.31 ERA with the Indians, 4.57, 94, 95, 609. 96, 684 with the Indians. So his career ERA was a 4.77. And you traded a future Hall of Famer for Jason Grimsley. So, and then also Jay Roberts brings up the whole Josh Fields for your down. Yeah. Yeah. So every team's going to have those clunkers because you don't really know because I don't think anybody really knew how good Alvarez was going to be. I mean, the Astros did because they had the scout, they had, they had the international scouting and they knew exactly how good this Alvarez kid would be. And so they're like, um, Hey, do y'all need a reliever Dodgers? Y'all need a reliever. So, um, I just wanted to take y'all down a memory lane and just revisit this trade. Cause it happened 31 years ago on January 10th, 1991. The, this was the year that Jeff Bagwell would make his major league debut. He would go on to win a rookie of the year. And then also uh, this was the only season that Kurt Schilling would pitch for the Houston Astros. He would get eight saves. Steve Finley would um, steal 40 something bases for the Astros. 
Pete Harnish would be a all-star. So I would say, looking back on it, the Astros fleece the Orioles. So thank you, Orioles. Great trade. And guys, keep on listening to the Locked on Astros podcast all off season, and hopefully this lockout will end soon. And we'll be back probably on Wednesday night for hopefully a special edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Until then, go Strohs, and we will talk to you later.